Uh, it's already undergoing redevelopment. Literally, the, the, the school district has bought up a lot of those houses, is demolishing them. It was actually basically designated a redevelopment area within the South Side Plan, recognizing that its future as a residential neighborhood is just not there, that its, its best use really was more institutional for the school and the hospital. Um, across the street, Quick some question. of the, yes. Was, how was that affected as far as um, tearing down the homes, uh, considering the, uh, the rule that we have on historic homes? And so, um, the question was, how did the, the rules that are in place for uh, review of, of historic homes apply to that situation? 75 to 100. Um, a two-part answer is, first, the, the, the plan, the city's plan, supported what the school is doing, okay, in terms of buying up the property and, and pursuing it for redevelopment for institutional purposes. Okay? Um, second is that the, the rules regarding historic review are still in place, so every one of them had to go, every one of them that, that met the threshold, the 100 years in age, um, had to go in front of the Historic Preservation Commission for what's called demolition clearance, and any of them 50 years older went, still went in front of that body for, for a review process, slightly different, you know, less, less intensive, basically, process. But yeah, they all had to go through there. Um, any denials? Oh, uh, no, no. Uh, they did, uh, after the fact, find a very interesting um, feature there. They were tearing down a house um, and found a log cabin uh, that apparently was used as an addition or part of the original structure. To so, so they had moved a log cabin from somewhere, put it there, and built a house around it. It was very odd. Um, but they, they did manage the, the demolition company, as I understand, to preserve the log, sent it to uh, to, well, to St. Louis, there's someone who does stuff like that, right. preserves them and, and reuses them, and so that was that was good. Um, but anyway, um, some of that area, um, you know, some of the area along Stadium as well. I have a giant area identified here that is actually a recommendation of that South Site plan. I'm not sure if I'm very comfortable with that. Some of the area up along Missouri Boulevard, and some of the South Denmark Drive and Kimborg Hills area right at the intersection of Highway 179 and Missouri Boulevard, next to Coles and Arby's and such. Um, but I'll, I'll point at some of those um, specifically within the map. Okay, so this is the map. This is what we staff are formally presenting to you as a first draft, okay? And uh, um, we can obviously edit it. We can respond to any general concerns. We can respond to specific concerns. Uh, but we want to present it to you in detail, give you a chance to absorb it, ask any questions, make any comments, and then we'll proceed from there to see if you're comfortable with what we've produced or if it needs major editing or anything. Um, I'll start off uh, area presentations first by focusing on the the western side of the city. I think I have about four slides. Um, cut that up into about four slides. Um, the first slide is, and so each slide has the, the current designation. So basically, uh, you know, the what what is official right now. We updated the 1996 map to today. And so that is what's shown on the, the left-hand side of the screen. The right-hand side of the screen is what is proposed. I have not highlighted every minor change in between the two. You could look and maybe see a few things. Um, I've highlighted, uh, it doesn't show up very well, but in black lines, um, the major changes. And that's what I basically intend to present to you, some of the major changes, not going through every, every minor detail. Um, but this first slide deals with Truman Boulevard. Um, up on the screen and right there, is the intersection of Truman Boulevard and um, Industrial on Highway 179. So the GURBS uh, grocery store is located right there. And so Truman Boulevard extends down to uh, the shopping mall, Capitol Mall, located right there. And so the whole Capitol Mall and much of the property around it is shown as red on this map, indicating commercial. Um, basically no change from the, from the prior plan or from what's in, in effect now. Uh, as you drive up 
Truman Boulevard, you get to an area that's kind of a, a mostly resident, or sorry, mostly commercial offices. A number of medical offices, dentists, various things. Uh, also some professional offices, I think a, a state office or two. Actually designated as high density residential on the development plan map. Um, so kind of odd. Uh, it was developed one lot at a time through PUD processes approved by the Planning Zoning Commission. Um, we'd actually recommend or basically proposing to change that to that suburban mixed use. There's not a whole lot of apartments out there right now. Um, I think there are some um, up on North Timaw Drive, a parallel street to Truman. Um, but there's a number of vacant lots, and again, we do occasionally get you know, inquiries on what can I do on this property. And so that's one area that we've identified that might be ideal for allowing both. Not only some of these, you know, continuation of the office use, um, but also apartments. And so that's the pink color there. And then extending on up Truman Boulevard, you get to the more industrial area where Unilever and, and such is. Um, plus the, the massive blue area, which is a combination of uh, Runge Nature Center and the conservation offices and there's a cemetery there. The next slide is, uh, I've labeled it kind of Western Missouri Boulevard area. Uh, to orient you, um, this is Highway 50 and Missouri Boulevard running parallel to it. Uh, here is Highway 179 going straight through the middle of the map. And so I have uh, three areas highlighted on this map. Uh, I'll deal with the first, the biggest one first, this area right here. Uh, it's the South Ten Mile Drive, Kimborg Hills area. Whenever we went through various, uh, I think it was mostly subdivision oriented processes for Coles department store and the beginning phases of the Stone Ridge Village area, that was a, it was a very confrontational thing. Uh, I don't know how many members were here at the time. It was long enough ago. Um, but this neighborhood um, was very concerned about their future. Um, I literally spent, I think, the next two years in meetings with them, <coughs> trying to figure out what their future is, and came to, a, uh, to adopt a little miniature neighborhood plan for that area that basically called it out as being intended for commercial in the future but spelling out exactly how that would happen, that it wouldn't, you know, occur in the middle of the neighborhood at one time, that it would gradually overtake the neighborhood. And so, um, have identified it as a redevelopment area on the, the new plan and recognizing, basically, that its future is going to be commercial. <coughs> as well as a, a lot of the various parcels, most of which have been acquired by the, um, uh, the quarry, you know, the quarry company um, that uh, eventually would be quarried out and, and developed in some manner. I don't know exactly what the future holds for the rest of the Stone Ridge Village and quarry area. Uh, there could be some apartments in the fu in their future, but right now their focus, um, you know, so far has been big box. There's two other areas, both of which are very small, um, shown on this map. Uh, I guess three, but. One is a small area shown as commercial. It's actually basically a relic from when South Ten Mile Drive used to continue on and connect all the way to Country Club Drive. And then Highway 50 got built here. And so there is a small service station there. And it's still there. And it's still being used commercially. Um, and it is buried back in a residential area. And so we're basically proposing to downgrade that to a residential category that would have no immediate effect on that property. It would take a rezoning to implement this plan, but this would be the first step to basically recognize that its future is not commercial. There's a very similar situation um, down here. Um, it is right off of Highway 179 where Frog Hollow Road uh, goes underneath Highway 179. And so Frog Hollow got rerouted to um, Creek Trail Drive. In fact, I'm not sure where the name changes. Um, but Frog Hollow Road used to be what is now called Tree Valley Lane. And there's a little bridge right there. Well, this, there's a, a commercial business back there. It's a, uh, um, a automobile towing service and, and also stores you know, wrecked automobiles. 
um, again, back in a residential area, uh, and and we're proposing to downgrade it to a residential category. Again, it would have no immediate effect on that particular business or property. Um, then, kind of looking at West Edgewood Drive, uh, and so here's the intersection of Highway 179 and West Edgewood. Uh, El, El Humidor Restaurant is located right here. Um, I, I don't even know if I needed to point this one out. It's fairly minor, but basically recognizing that this um, that this is a commercial corridor. I think maybe back in 1996 they had ideas that maybe it would have some have a residential component in there. What we're seeing is is single family residential built back behind and commercial on the front, and so that's basically the the, the plan that that we would put forward. Do you sort of have a process of work for the two areas that you're saying there are businesses in them right now that would then be changed to commercial? Yes. I mean, um, from commercial to right, residential. To residential. Um, so the, the the cleanest way to do that. Um, I mean, it's still it's still not positive for those those properties if you know if, if they're intending it to be commercial forever. But staff could at any point um, propose a downzoning of those, so a rezoning from that commercial category that they're both zoned, and uh, down to you know to a residential. And then if you know that would come in front of this body and continue on to the city council, the property owner would be duly notified. It, it, that is the process to, to, to rezone their property. They don't have to be in favor of it. Uh, the city can propose that and do that. Um, and uh, then if successful, they would become a grandfathered use. So even then, it wouldn't necessarily have an immediate impact on their business. It just wouldn't allow them to expand it. Okay? They would sit there as a non-conforming or a grandfathered use. Uh, and quite frankly, our code is very... Um, uh, how do I put it? It has a lot of protection in place for non for grandfathered uses. Um, you know some you know some other cities' codes. You know if you go out to the east coast or the west coast, they might have moratorium or timelines that are associated with such things. We do not. Um, they could basically continue in perpetuity to continue to operate that type of business there. Uh, it would only um, affect them if. Uh, they were looking to expand in some way, or if their building was destroyed um, by some sort of natural cause or voluntarily. So, yes? South of uh, West Edgewood there right now is um, basically a walking trail Yep, right there, along there. Wouldn't that be more of a parks, open space cemetery, or, you know, parks? Um, it's a walking trail, and it's not really buildable between that sidewalk. And then there's a creek on the other side of it. Yes, it might be. So the question basically be, you know, should that be a, a, a park designation of some sort? Um, we might have to look at that because the right of way, especially with Edgewood and the creek, gets a little wonky in there. And that's not a, is that just a boundary line, property line? That's not an actual road or anything right there. That, but like, yeah. Uh, no, it's, it's a very wide, I'm not sure if it's right of way or if it's a property that the city acquired, probably property. Uh, before it was Edgewood was built, yeah. um, I can see up on the hill that it could be, um, you know, uh, residential. It'd yeah, be a very nice residential. Area. And so I actually have the next slide that, that kind of leads into it um, is is further down Edgewood. So uh, literally, we're looking just off the the edge of the map there. Um, but so so here is the intersection of um, Wildwood and Edgewood, mm -hmm. and so you can see the right of way extension. Mm -hmm. That is acquired right away, but the road has not been built. So that's the extension of Wildwood Drive, if you're familiar. Uh, it's a county project that they have actually designed. Um, I think they've represented it uh, in the past in some of the sales tax, uh, five-year sales tax initiatives that go through. But they, they backed off of it and redirected that money, I think, to the Lafayette Street area, if I recall. Um, and I, I think that there's still you know, a little bit of hesitancy on their part to, to spend the money there, that there's other areas. Um, but uh, that is an area, you know, we actually did a, a rezoning for that property uh, where the property owner came in and made a commercial case and, and was successful in getting it rezoned. But yeah, until that point, you really can't cross that creek. And so 
you know, the designation on the south side doesn't, quite frankly, doesn't really mean a whole lot um, because you can't get to it um, except from Frog Hollow Road, and most of that is residential. Um, but we do have an area, I guess I should be looking at the old map. You know, so again, back a long time ago, I think they had certain um, ideas that maybe there would be a spread of different uses. Uh, this is kind of a classic, I'll say classic zoning tool method of having commercial and then bordering it or buffering it with a, you know, a, a medium intensity type of, so in this case, high density residential before getting to uh, some, some other non-commercial use or, you know, or even a single family. And so they didn't really have any property lines to go off of, so they just kind of drew a, a line there. Okay? <laughs> That's what we got to work with. Um, and so that property is actually, um, I think it's, you know, I'm not completely familiar with the real estate market, but I think it's for sale. Mm -hmm. And uh, and most of the inquiries we've received is basically continuing that trend that has already been in place up, you know, north of there, and that is single-family residential. 